Hello, this is Dr. Pankaj Kumar, your mentor for the current session of Need Bites, and we will be talking about the translocation of solutes. So far, we have just seen that in case of photosynthesis, uh, the carbohydrate is formed, and uh, all the carbohydrate that is being formed in the form of uh, glucose or fructose, and eventually it is actually stored in the form of starch. But what happens? That a starch cannot be translocated to the phloem. First of all, it has to be get converted into some monosaccharide or disaccharide forms. Then only it can be uh, transported. Okay. So what happens? That all the stored sugar is actually gets converted into transportable form, and the most important transportable form is a sucrose. So the entire translocation of solutes is going to occur through the sucrose only, right? However, there are some other forms as well. For instance, take an example of raffinose or stachyose, uh, primarily a stachyose in case of grapes. Okay, but we can say that in 90% of the cases, what happens that translocation is going to occur in the form of sucrose only, right? Now, is it passive process or is it an active process? Actually, it is an active process. Okay, and uh, the theory that is given for it is what we call pressure flow hypothesis. Earlier. You see, this hypothesis was given by Munch, but later on, uh, Munch, the very concept of Munch was actually a passive one. But now we know very well that the active loading of sugar is required, and for this, energy is required. That's why we say that translocation of solute is an active process, right? So here, what we understand, there are two things: one, the source, and second is the sink, right? What is source? Source is those area in which the carbohydrates are being synthesized. Primarily, it is the leaf. Where the photosynthetic products are going to be stored, right, or synthesized. Okay. Uh, once the synthesis happens, then this synthesized products need to be translocated to the area where it required to be consumed. So it may be, uh, let it be say, uh, roots where uh, the food is going to be stored in the form of starch or stain or any other part where there is actual requirement. Okay. So we will just consider that how. The sugar is actually being transported from source to sink, right? So you see, there are two possible ways by which sugar is translocated, right? One what we call uh, active transport, and second what we call the polymer trap mechanism. Okay. Now the sugars are actively transported into cell elements. Uh, of course, here energy is involved. But in some species, what happens that phloem is loaded by what we call polymer trap mechanism. Okay, so here the conducting cell plasma membranes are permeable to monosaccharides and disaccharides, but not to the polysaccharides. Okay, so what happens? Simple sugar merely diffuses into the conducting cells, right? And eventually they are polymerized into polysaccharides so that they cannot diffuse back out. So that is how actually it works, right? Now have a look at this diagram. So this diagram is actually talking about the source where the photosynthesis is going to happen. You can see there that this is the area where photosynthesis is happening, right? And this is the sugar is actually being converted into starch. Now what happens? Cells surrounding the sieve elements, both companion cells and other phloem parenchyma cells, are important in terms of loading things. Okay, so you can see there. That this is the phloem cell, and actually this, or we can say this is the sieve element, which is surrounded by the uh, pa uh, phloem parenchyma cells, and as well as the companion cells. Okay. So what happens? So many of the cells are transfer cells, and uh, the transfer cells are those cells which help in rapid short distance transport. Okay. So as we can see there, that uh, sugar accumulates. In a sieve element, okay. So what what will happen? That protoplasm will become more concentrated, and once the protoplasm becomes concentrated, then the H two O will start flowing, okay, just to uh, balance the concentration over there, okay. So once the sugar comes in, then some sort of pressure is going to develop inside the phloem cells, okay. So uh, this pressure is actually utilized for the flow of the entire solute. Right. Now have a look at the the source once again. So what happens? The pressure starts to build this protoplasm, okay, and it is squeezed through the sieve pores because we know very well that here 
that sip pores are there so through that sip pores what happens that the sap start flowing okay so what happens due to this massive pressure we we, we can assume uh, we can understand that how big it is because this pressure is equivalent to as high as 2.4 millipascals okay and uh, uh, just just uh, a comparative account if you talk about the blood pressure that is just 0 0.016 so you can understand how much pressure it, it develops okay so out of that pressure what happens that entire the solute start transporting uh, from the uh, sieve elements to the sink area okay so now this entire things will go to the sink okay so the actual amount of sugar and other nutrients that is transported by flowing per hour is actually called as a mass transfer right now have a look at the sink now what is going to happen in the sink what happens in the sink uh, first of all in the flowing sucrose is coming so in the sink what happens sucrose is actively transported out of the sieve elements as you can see there so here is actually sucrose right and sucrose is actively transported back to the area right so what will happen that loss of sugar cause phloem sop to be more dilute so once it will be more dilute then osmotic potential and water potential tend to become less negative so as a result what will happen again the water will diffuse out water will again diffuse out because here there is a more concentration and here it is a less concentration so that water will diffuse out okay so storage cells whatever the sugar that comes sucrose they do not uh, store it in the sucrose rather they uh, store in the form of starch so just see that what is the advantage of being uh, uh, storing the things in the form of starch you see once it is a stored in starch what will happen that every time there is a constant osmotic pressure that is going to be maintained within this cell okay because you see every time sucrose is coming over there so unless and until this sucrose is converted into starch the potential will keep on increasing so that is not going to help so some sort of trapping mechanism is required that a constant sucrose is maintained over there so that the water should come keep coming over there to the requisite level only so whatever sucrose is actually coming they are eventually getting converted into starch within the sink right now let's talk about one of the most important uh, protein what we call p protein in uh, translocation okay because you see as a uh, uh, phloem is under pressure right so what happens that uh, there is a every chance of excessive bleeding right because you see uh, you might have seen that uh, you cut the phloem then uh, the phloem say keep on uh, moving out okay so in order to check those loss then there is a substances called p protein so what what p protein does the p protein uh, is a two large mass so they move to the cut area right and they form a mess like a structure in which rest of the thing get uh, entangled and finally the bleeding is going to be stopped so this is how the p protein acts okay so we popularly call them as a p protein plug okay so p protein is present in all dicots okay but not all uh, monocots and uh, in case of conifers uh, the p protein is absent right but in those plants in which p protein is not there we have another substance as what we call callose okay so what callose does callose stays in a solution only if it is under pressure right the moment pressure decreases because you see when the cut is going to happen the pressure will decrease right so callos precipitate okay and along the mass it goes to the area where the bleeding is going to happen so along with the p protein or without the p protein right they cover the entire area okay and we can say that a callos plug is formed and the leaking is prevented right now right now we have seen the role of uh, p protein and callos which help in uh, checking the leak of phloem in case of any injuries right so this is all as far as entire uh translocation of solute is concerned thank you